The Meteor is a long-range active rudder homing air-to-air -air missiles built by the MBDA consortium formed by Airbus, Galileo and uh, British Aerospace Systems. It enters service in 2016 with the Swedish Air Force and it is currently in the process of being adopted by all the major European Air Forces. It is on track of becoming one of the most important air-to-air -air missiles in history, challenging the MRAM supremacy because it features a quite an unusual propulsion that gives the weapon a clear advantage over others. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please subscribe and hit the bell to learn something that is very, very difficult to find elsewhere on YouTube. We have said many times that energy represents the capacity of the missile to go somewhere and do something. The most electronically sophisticated weapon in the world is useless if it can get where the target is. While flying smart trajectories is definitely a great help in saving energy, at the end of the day, a missile can only do what its energy allows. There are two components to energy, speed and altitude. The higher the energy, the higher the altitude, the more energy is available to the missile. The missile gets its energy chiefly from the engine burn and also from the speed and altitude of the launching platform. Missile rocket engine burn fast and furiously to accelerate the missile to high supersonic speed and hence they burn very quickly. For most weapons the engine burn is just a matter of few seconds and after that the missile is gliding toward the target. It is not difficult to understand that even if a missile reaches a target uh, but it is low uh, devoid of energy, uh, with no propulsion, then it's also very easy to evade. All of this was very clear to the Royal Air Force in 1994. In that year they issued the Staff Requirement Air 1239. The requirement numbers were never officially released, but sources say that the Royal Air Force was actually demanding a no escape zone at least twice as big as that of the Amram. The missile had to feature advanced kinematic capabilities to chase and destroy a maneuvering target at distance. Obviously there were a lot of other high-tech requirements but at the core the Royal Air Force wanted a missile that was able to fly like a plane and not just giving a shot at distance. The story of the competition to build a meteor would deserve a video in itself. All the aerospace industry of the Europe and the United States actually scrambled to have their role and or in the program. Some manufacturers formed teams, some others went alone, and the United States tried to hijack the whole program with the BVRAM. The program was judged to be so advanced that after a number of proposals from the participants, it was decided that the risk reduction phase had to take place. The participants received time and money to assess the technology being proposed that until that time were mostly on paper, uh, just to reduce the risk of actually implementing them. In the meanwhile, other European Air Forces manifested their interest, but also the industry was in the process of consolidation that was following the end of the Cold War. So the participants kept changing, but the requirements always stayed the same. The United Kingdom made its decision in the year 2000 and other air forces uh, joined uh, soon after, even though the decision in those many cases was definitely not easy. The development started soon after and it took the usual long time that it takes for every modern and sophisticated weapon system. The initial operational capability was reached in 2016. The Meteor is a very modern missile, but what sets it apart from the competition it is its propulsion system. At launch the missile is accelerated at high supersonic speed around Mach 3 is believed 
by a solid propellant booster that burns in just a few seconds. When the booster propellant is exhausted, the cylindrical cavity that is left at the back of the weapon doubles as the combustion chamber for a throttable ducted rocket. A TDR is basically a rocket that uses atmospheric oxygen as the oxidizer, which is provided by the small supersonic air intakes uh, below the missile. By the way, it is often said that the missile uses a ramjet, but I don't think it is entirely correct because the engine doesn't seem to have a flame holder. The really clever part of this solution is the so-called gas generator. The gas generator contains a solid and secret boron-based compound. When the booster combustion reaches the gas generator, the compound is ignited and it starts emitting a um, fuel-rich gas that burns spontaneously when in contact with the atmosphere. Very simple and yet very, very advanced. The system of propulsion has two advantages. The specific impulse is estimated by some sources to be about three times as much as uh, the solid propellant rockets, which is quite a lot. More importantly, the gas flow can be continuously throttled with a ratio of about 10 to 1. This means that the missile can fly like a plane, for example, minimizing the thrust during the cruise stage and accelerating again during the final stage of the chase when more energy is required. We have no certain sources about the duration of the burn of the TDR. I wonder why. But I wouldn't be surprised if it was in the region of 50-60 seconds, which is definitely a lot of time to do some chasing. That is enough time to do a lot, a lot of chasing. Some sources also report that the maximum range is enormous, over 300 kilometers. That would be good, but is not necessarily an advantage. At that distance, it's also very difficult to have correct targeting data, so I'm pretty much sure that it won't really be used much in practice. The real advantage is that having a lot of energy continuously pumped into the system, the no escape zone is huge. Whatever the enemy target is doing, there is a very good chance that he won't be able to get out of it before the weapon catches up. Again, sources say that the no escape zone in ideal condition is up to 100 kilometers, which seems quite an exaggeration. Um, a value around 70 or 80 kilometers seems more likely, but even in this case, it is definitely huge. Obviously, there are no free lunches. These performances come to a quite a hefty price, and which may be a limit to the number of weapons being built. I personally would also add that the shelf life of the boron-based propellant is probably yet to be seen. Another limitation may be that the small air intakes that compress the air for the TDR may probably not work very well outside a relatively limited range of pitch and yaw angles. However, with the proper guidance system, this may not be necessarily a big limitation. Obviously, the missile is a modern and effective weapon, even discounting its propulsion. The active radar homing seeker has been developed starting from the seekers that equip the Mika and the Aster missiles, a proven technology. The fuse is a reliable radar proximity fuse that ignites a fragmentation warhead. Behind the warhead is housed a battery pack. It is worth noting that these components are actually structural. Uh, that is, there is no separate airframe where the components are inserted. The components are just attached to each other. Particularly advanced is the two-way data link. The missile in flight can report back about its kinematic condition and its status, but most importantly, the launching platform can 
guide the missile and even retarget the missile while in flight. It is also possible for a platform other than the launcher to acquire the control of the weapon while the launcher withdraws to safety. And actually, considering that the meteor can fly like a plane, it only makes sense that it can be guided in this way. I wouldn't be surprised if the weapon was actually capable of coming back and attacking again with the help of the data link. Currently, the Meteor has been integrated on the Gripen, the Eurofighter and the Rafale. It will soon be integrated to the European F-35s, becoming the de facto standard air-to-air -air weapons for the European Air Forces. I actually expect that we will be seeing Amrams and Mikas for quite a while, but definitely the Meteor is the future. And not only it is the future, most importantly, with its outstanding kinematic performances, well, it is definitely a game changer. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.